If you've ever taken a COVID rapid test, a drug screening panel, or a pregnancy test, then you've interacted with the complex world of biosensors. By hijacking existing systems for molecular biology or building entirely new ones, scientists can develop tests for diseases, drugs, and many other chemical indicators. Unfortunately, this can be a very long and expensive process. Remember how long it took to get COVID rapid tests? Right now, for every new chemical you want to test for, you have to build an entirely new sensing system. But what if you could design a single sensing system that can test for basically any chemical you want to find? And what if that system was so versatile and portable that you can put the system in a test strip as well as use it for synthetic biology in plants, yeast, and bacteria? Today, we're talking about the powerful novelty and promise of Pier One biosensors. Welcome to DIY Biotech. To test for conditions like COVID-19 or pregnancy, scientists came up with a system that utilizes a component of our immune system called antibodies. These Y-shaped proteins can very effectively detect one specific protein or antigen. By copying an antibody from our own immune system or engineering a new antibody, scientists can create lateral flow tests for new diseases or conditions. This process usually takes months of work and the tests, like the COVID rapid tests, take minutes to give a reading. On top of this, antibodies can usually only detect larger molecules like proteins. So wouldn't it be nice if we could detect smaller molecules like pesticides and substances of abuse and environmental contaminants? The Pier 1 system promises to detect these types of chemicals that couldn't easily be detected before. On top of this, new Pier 1 biosensors can be created in weeks and can even be implemented into simple test strips similar to pH paper. So how does this system actually work? Pier 1 is a protein, specifically a plant hormone receptor, that can be modified to detect new chemicals. For over a decade, researchers have perfected ways to design new Pier 1 biosensors to detect a wide variety of chemicals. Scientists have also shown that these biosensors can be used in many different applications, such as synthetic biology components in bacteria, yeast, and plants, and outside of cells entirely in in vitro assays. The fact that this system works outside of cells in these in vitro assays means that one day they could be engineered as a simple test strip. This flexibility to detect new chemicals and portability between use cases makes the Pier 1 biosensing system incredibly valuable to diverse fields. Pier 1 detects our target chemical in what we call its binding pocket. Remember, Pier 1's original job was to detect a hormone in plants. So when the hormone or other chemical finds its way into the binding pocket of the Pier 1 protein, another protein called HAB1 is called into action. When engineered, the binding of Pier 1 and HAB1 usually brings together additional machinery that sends a message to another part of the cell that allows the cell to tell us when the sensor detects a chemical. Within a bacteria cell, for example, we can design the docking of Pier 1 and HAB1 to activate green fluorescent protein, or GFP expression, which makes the cell glow green. So in this example, when our target chemical is present, the cell glows green. For Pier 1 to detect a new chemical, that chemical must fit snugly in the binding pocket. To do this, we can generate mutations within this binding pocket to make sure our chemical of interest fits and doesn't fall out. We can simulate how our chemical should fit inside Pier 1, but our computer models of proteins are still not quite perfect even though they've gotten significantly better over the last few years. To get around this, we can order hundreds of thousands of different Pier 1 biosensor DNA sequences and hope that at least one variation will detect our chemical. Once we have this library of slightly varying DNA sequences, we can put the DNA in yeast that are designed to die if they carry a version of the Pier 1 biosensor that doesn't detect our chemical. 
So we can put millions of yeast cells on a Petri dish with our chemical and see what happens in a process called screening. All of the cells will die except for the ones carrying a pure one variant that snugly fits our chemical. We can then sequence the DNA of that yeast cell to find which pure one variant worked. So far, scientists have discovered pure one biosensors that can detect environmental contaminants such as pesticides and substances of abuse such as synthetic cannabinoids. In my PhD, I found many other Pier 1 biosensors that I can't yet discuss because we haven't published the data. What I can say is that Pier 1 mutants can tell the difference between very similar molecules, for example cannabinoids like CBD and THC, which I find very impressive. Right now, the only way to test for different cannabinoids is with lab-grade machinery that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Once we find new sensors, we can move those DNA sequences into bacteria, other yeast, plants, or outside of the cells like I mentioned earlier for lab testing or test strip technologies. You can see another application in this figure. Here is a Pure One biosensor variant that is detecting a pesticide called Azenfos and then reporting that detection by turning the entire plant red. Often we can't see what areas of land are polluted, so we can put these biosensors in plants so the plants can tell us what areas are polluted and need cleaning up. My personal favorite application of this technology is as an affordable test strip. Imagine a 10 cent test strip for commonly laced drugs like fentanyl. And whichever dangerous drug comes next, we could develop a new test strip for that new drug in a matter of weeks as opposed to months with the old technology. Or what if we could rapidly test for human hormones like testosterone or estrogen so we could quickly diagnose disease or test new treatments? If you're concerned about pesticides or PFAS, the so-called forever chemicals, in your food and drinking water, we could develop Pure One-based test strips that you could use to test your produce and water quality right at home. The future looks bright for Pure One, and I didn't even touch on many of the synthetic biology applications in this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Leave a comment on what you want me to cover next. Thanks for watching.